So did any, did any, has anybody got any words in their head of what that was like, listening to that? Trapped. Trapped. Dread. No resolution. Did someone say giving up? You quite liked it. It's okay. Okay. That something else should be happening. Yeah. Quite frustrating, yeah. Yes, maddening. Something's trapped. Pacing. Uh huh. Did you get the sense that time it was sort of endless and that there wasn't really a? S you get the idea there might be something happening and then. Yes, yes. It's very typical of um, a patient experiencing. Yes. 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 Well, the patient, she described this like being like a hamster on a wheel, desperate to get off and for someone to open the cage for her. And as you've noted, there's no shape to this music. We feel it could go on forever, and indeed it did. There's also no space for another's music, and therefore no opportunity for, for relationship or dialogue. And I think that was the feeling you had, that there could be something else, but there's actually no space for that. It's um, quite impossible to play with that. Yet I think it is essential that we find a way of listening to this music, because it is the trauma that we're hearing in its bodily form, perhaps with no mind as yet able to process this further. If we can stay with this, something, something that may feel traumatic to us, we may be able to provide something different for the patient. I think in war situations, as has been noted already, this is not the work to do. People need time to settle themselves we do have uh, a great deal of health inside all of us, and that needs a chance. And at such times, I think the more general therapeutic effects of music can also be appropriate, although one needs to take care that any musical in interventions are not overwhelming for the traumatic person, and Nigel spoke a little about this. Working close to conflicts one cannot be unaffected, and this, this is everybody, includes everybody, and therefore outside support is essential. And you'll see, these are the words of a therapist who worked in Mostar around two years after the war, when things were still settling, and there was understandably a great deal of tension um, and quite a lot of paranoia. And she said, as time passed, it became apparent that the general depression in Mostar had started to affect me. I had difficulty concentrating, was often anxious, and began to feel like every day there were huge challenges to face. They may have been as simple as trying to mail a letter or as difficult as arranging for a piece of equipment to be repaired in a different country. It was also stressful working with the local staff who had little motivation and were constantly struggling to cope with their own challenging lives. I remember often feeling that my clinical work was the easy part of my job. Fortunately, I had outside support in the form of weekly telephone calls with my music therapy supervisor, 
and although she lived in the UK, she had been to Mostar a number of times, was aware of the issues I faced on a daily basis, and was able to give me good advice and support. As well, there was a mutual trust and respect within our music therapy team, and we supported one another through everything. In the work with the young men that John spoke about, Ian and myself, when we came back from the area after each group, we'd go back to my consulting room and we'd improvise together. Uh, we used to record the improvisations and it did really help us to process some of the very disturbed sessions we had with those young men. One of the things trauma does is compact our experience into a kind of timeless mass where there's no space for time and no space for thought or reflection. We struggle with the event itself, not with the memory of it. Introducing music into such a context is introducing a different kind of space in which people may find it possible to move towards new experiences, something that is a problem for those traumatized. And as um, Alfred Brendel noted, within music, we are also in the area of the traumatic. He said, art creates unity, order, harmony in a way that still includes chaos. I'm not going to dwell on this slide, but I want to alert you to the statement from Michael Parsons relating to psychoanalytic work. He says, to tell a dream in the analytic situation is more than narration. It is to expose one's dreaming, and this is to place oneself where time and timelessness collide. And I believe that music improvised in the consulting room also makes this happen. And when the patient plays the sounds from their bodies, they are in a way dreaming their music in the moment. In dreaming in this way, the timeless musical space of the piano solo you heard moves closer to the kind of time in a different kind of music, where the music is being composed in the moment it is being played. This is a quote from the anthropologist John Blacking. Music is not then an escape from reality or a reinforcement of other political experiences it is in itself an adventure into the reality of the sensuous and social capabilities of the species and an experience of becoming in which individual consciousness is nurtured within the collective consciousness of the community. So what I'm going to call sounded dreams are therefore possible in improvisations where the therapist is open to whatever may occur without worry about its meaning or about understanding, but only what may unfold. From such a stance, the patient is then free to be who they are and how they are. This includes the therapist's respect of the traumatic nature of the music of the patient. I'm just gonna run through these slides. This is a little bit of my clinic room. Not many clinic rooms have a white baby grand piano. And this is a photo of Giant's Causeway on the north coast of Northern Ireland. Now I'm going to move to a different kind of time. This is time where it moves forward, where memory is possible, where creativity is possible. An example of this is captured in a moment in a duet with the same patient who played the piano solo. And it's from a few months further into her treatment. She has requested that we both play the same instrument and she's chosen the metallophone. I don't know if you know what a metallophone is. Instrument with metal bars anyway. We sit opposite each other with the instrument between us. She plays a single note, after which I play, and then she plays, and so on. So the whole improvisation is alternate notes. Uh, she plays, I play, she plays, I play, she plays, all the way through. 